Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Richard, we're going to start out this week talking about parenting, but not just parenting, because we've talked about parenting um, styles and and different things parents can do, but this week we're going to focus on parenting myths, and we're going to approach it, I think, in a way that that I hope is going to help a lot of the parents out there sort of get rid of some of these beliefs and so they can start making better decisions. I have a question. Okay. All right. When we write about parenting Mm -hmm. and we talk about parenting, we always run into, well, it's one thing if you're dealing with a pre-kindergartner, middle school child, high school child, early adolescence, late adolescence. Are we going to be focusing on a particular age group or is this applicable to all parents? This will be applicable to all parents. Bigger challenge. It is a bigger challenge. All right. Uh, But... But the underlying principles, I think, are, okay. are consistent. Right? So we're talking about principles across ages. Exactly. Okay? Things you can apply to any age child. Exactly. Okay. And we're starting off this morning w- with the Mac Daddy. Punishment. 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 A Mac Daddy has to be punishment. It has to be. And, okay. and so we're going to talk a little bit about punishment today. Because the, the big parenting myth is that if you want your child to behave, if you want your child to make good decisions mm-hmm. and to be compliant and... To be some of the other things that we're going to talk about throughout the su- course, course of this week, uh, whether it's success or to respectful all or right. all these things, that you have to implement and use punishment. You're right. Parents feel the obligation. Mm-hmm. They, in fact, they talk to us about it. Well, I have to. Mm-hmm. I must punish him. Right. They feel obligated to, mm-hmm. but they also feel that it's necessary right. in order to get, as you say, compliance, obedience, respect. Right success, whatever they're after, right. that I have to punish my children. Somehow my children will be incomplete if they haven't been punished. Right, mm-hmm. right. So, so when we think mm-hmm. about punishment, you, you know, again, I know that we've talked about this a lot of times uh, in, in our books, but also in, uh, in podcasts we've talked mm-hmm. about punishment, mm-hmm. that you know, the idea that a lot of parents hold is that you know, we have to, I have to find a new way uh, they never say these words, but, they, but it, it, right. this is what the words sound like. I, I have to find a new way to hurt my child in order to get them to, to bend. I have to inflict enough pain, mm-hmm. psychological, emotional, physical right. pain, in order for my child to change. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that myth, I think, is perpetuated by a lot of different things, whether mm-hmm. it's our, some cultural right. aspects. Uh, we talked before about that author who, who wrote about yeah. African American moms who um, are, are very prone to you know physical punishments, right. corporal punishments with their with their children, um, but it's it's a very southern thing to mm-hmm. use corporal punishment oh, yeah. and physical yeah. punishment. Get a switch. Right, right. I discovered uh, switches when I came to uh, the South. I remember switches. Yeah. Um, Go out and pull a branch off the tree. Switches. Coat hangers, oh. flip flops. It didn't matter. <laughs> Belts. Um, oh, flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks a little bit. You have PTSD. <laughs> but, but but you're right. And across ages, you know, you heard a you heard a three year old by spanking it by right. smacking him on the bottom. You hurt an eight year old by time out. You hold a you hurt a twelve year old by taking her cell phone. Right. You hurt a sixteen year old by taking the car. Right. Okay. But the but the the goal is the same. How much? How do I inflict enough pain right. to get what I want? Right. Mm-hmm. And so the so so the myth is that punishment equals compliance. That punishment equals success. And and it doesn't. Uh, I I think that the research is pretty clear that it doesn't. And not only that it doesn't, but that it um, it, it really is. A, a misconception of what punishment means, what right. punishment is supposed to be for anyways. Right. Punishment is really a, a psychological application of um, a consequence to decrease the likelihood of a behavior right. happening again. And I think if we put it in that context of punishment is a 
is one of the consequences. Right. Very frequently, not full disclosure, my wife will say, well, you don't believe in punishment. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's, right. let's talk about exactly what that means. Right. I believe in consequences. Right. Now, let's talk about punishment as a consequence. Right. What should it do? And, and they need to be naturally occurring. Those are the ones that are most effective. I, w I was talking to um, someone recently, and we were talking about how long it takes the kids to get ready to get going somewhere, even if it's someplace that the kids want to go. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and this uh, dad is wondering, what do I do when my kids won't get ready so that we can right. get out the door? Mm -hmm. And then we end up being late to, you know, whatever it is that the kids mm -hmm. are wanting to go to. And, you know, and then they're upset because they're late and because it's already started and they miss right. some things. Well, that is the natural That's consequence the natural... of not being ready. Right. You know, the natural consequence of not getting ready on time mm -hmm. when it's something for them is that they miss out on miss part, part of it. Of it. Right. And so that's the, that's the learning part. So you say, mm -hmm. well, you know, remember I've been working with you for about 30 minutes mm -hmm. to get ready and get out the door. So, mm -hmm. you know, because you didn't, you weren't ready on time, we're late. And we're so we're going to miss some of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So in, in a way, by the definition of behavior through behaviorism, that is punishment. Uh, because you're working, it's a consequence that hopefully decreases if, the likelihood. If it decreases the behavior. If it does, right. Then it's punishment. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to say, well, you're running late, so that's it. We're not going to go. I have to punish you. Right. Right. I, right. I have to inflict pain. Right. Because you, you, you made this little transgression because right. you're late. Now I must inflict pain. Right. No, 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 no. Right. So, so we have to make sure that instead of just blindly thinking about punishment, we have to think about what is the naturally occurring consequence. Right. Typically, very often, the naturally, naturally occurring consequence or the naturally um, uh, associated consequence mm -hmm. happens anyways. It, right. it, it's just something that naturally happens. Right. It's going to occur anyway. So. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you, there's no reason to punish my, punish my kids mm -hmm. for, not, you know, for failing a test right. um, because they didn't study. Right. Not studying, the consequence of that is failing the test. So now you have a failing grade. Um, if the grade is more important to the parent than to the kid, well, we'll talk about success <laughs> in a couple of days. That's different. But, right. so, but the, the naturally occurring consequence is the poor grade. Now the kid has to figure out how to work to improve that grade or to recover right. that grade or to, do, you know, to right. make up for it. Mm -hmm. the, we don't have to... We don't have to punish them. We don't have to come down on them for that. Um, and, and so you're, you're right. And I'm thinking back to what you were saying a minute ago that, you know, we often say that we don't, we're not huge proponents of punishment. It's blind punishment that we're not really Mindless. proponents of. Right. You know, this, you've done this, so you have to be punished for that. When right. what we should be thinking about is the technical use of the term punishment, mm -hmm. which is to reduce an undesirable behavior. I want my child to stop doing this. So what consequence do I use? Mm -hmm. what, do, what do I do to get my child to stop doing something that I don't want her to do? Right, right. So if you want them to study, but instead of studying, they're on their phone, okay, well, let me hold the phone until you finish studying, and then you can have the phone back. Right. After I don't take your phone to punish you. Right. I take your phone to make De it possible for you to study. Right, to decrease to the decrease distraction that's keeping you from to doing To decrease you your phone use. Right. Okay, that's all I want to do. I want you to decrease your phone use. The easiest way to do that is for me to take the phone. Right. Not a punishment. Mm -mm. It's just a practical solution to the problem. And it, so it's not something that has to happen. Well, you know, I'm keeping your phone for three days because right. you're not because studying. You study, you know. Well, that's, that doesn't make sense. Right. That's not naturally occurring. And if you sit down and talk, you know, Ross Green talks about collaborative problem solving, right. you know, and this is a perfect example where instead of taking the child's phone because she's not studying, it's just to say, what's the problem here? Well, I'm on my phone. Okay, well, let me hold the phone. Right. And then you do your studying, and then as soon as you're done, I'll give it back to you. And, and, and parents, <clears throat> I, I know that you're going to doubt this, but it, it is absolutely true. 99 times out of 100, mm -hmm. if you sit down with a kid and you say, That's right. If you're not studying, what should your parents do? Um, they'll, say, they'll say they should punish me. Okay, well, let's, let's say that you're not studying because you're on your phone. What should your parents do? Well, they should take my, take phone, my phone so that I'll study. They're okay with. They that. know that they're, they're not. They're not. Um, they they don't put right. those pieces together. It's not that they don't put those pieces together. It's that parents don't do that. Right. 
So they, they know. And the other thing about punishment is if you take the phone to hurt them in some way, mm -hmm. you create an adversary relationship. Right. If you take the phone to solve a problem, mm -hmm. then you have a cooperative problem-solving approach. Right. And which do you want? Right. Yeah. So. Punishment, punishment is, by its very nature, and punishment the way that it's typically used. The common is, usage. Is right. adversarial. Right. Right. And by nature. By, right. Mm -hmm. just, that's just what it is. And right. so... We have to. We need to avoid that if we want to have a healthy relationship with our kids. If we want to work with them, as you say, collaboratively, we right. want to work with them with the common goal of their success, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later. Right. Um, then we need to have a conversation with them. We need to work with them mm -hmm. on managing these issues. Right. right. So no punishment. Right. When you get the urge to punish your child, stop and figure out exactly what it is you want. And then how can you and the child achieve that goal? Right. Okay. Yeah. Always stop first. When, whenever you get the urge to punish, stop, think about what you want and how you might be able to achieve that goal. Yeah, because many times when that urge to punish is there, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's a you problem, not a them problem. Right. So right. You, you're dealing with your own frustration and everything. Right. And so we need to figure out something about mm -hmm. that. Right. So. right. Okay. All right. That's Good. it for today. So we'll be back tomorrow with another parenting myth. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy and forget to be afraid.